So there's a medication called naloxone and there's a medication called naltrexone. And the one that we, we use for treating alcohol use disorder is naltrexone. So they're siblings of each other. Uh, naloxone is the product name Narcan and probably many of you have heard of Narcan. It's the medication that's available either in a nasal spray or in an injectable format to reverse an overdose of an opioid. And as you all know, um, fentanyl overdoses, heroin overdoses are deadly. And we have the capacity that frontline workers, police officers and EMTs, um, social workers even have the capacity of carrying this, those who are working with people with heroin and fentanyl issues. Naloxone or Narcan will reverse the overdose immediately. And you basically wake up with severe withdrawal and usually pretty angry people, but they're alive. Now, Trexone is not that potent of a blocker, an opioid blocker. And so they both, naloxone and naltrexone work by blocking endogenous opioids, or what you may have heard as endorphins or enkephalins. Our body produces its own um, opioids, endogenous opioids. And essentially, the way that naltrexone works is that it blocks the pleasurable effects of drinking, and it literally blocks it by blocking your natural opioids, your endogenous opioids. And so when people drink, smoke cigarettes, all sorts of drugs and other pleasurable activities, they're thought to occur through a pleasure pathway. And these endorphins or the endogenous opioids are part of that pleasure pathway. So naltrexone basically will make it less likely for people to enjoy a drink, make it easier to sort of drink more slowly, make it easier to delay the first drink. Um, and the goal is that it's really a tool for people to start meeting their goals of drinking less. But it also, of course, works best in combination with therapy, coaching, Alcoholics Anonym, Anonymous, et cetera. So an interesting question is that naltrexone, when I'm explaining this to patients, they say, well, is that gonna make it hard for me to enjoy other things? And I really can't tell you why it doesn't, but it doesn't seem to. Having said that, there'll be a really small subset of people on naltrexone who will experience depression um, from it and feel kind of numb to activities, to pleasurable things that they normally do. In that case, we usually look at an alternative medication because that's really untenable, but it's remarkable how uncommon it is it's remarkable to me how often I prescribe naltrexone along with an antidepressant. So in other words, naltrexone doesn't seem to worsen depression. It seems to work pretty specifically for helping people drink less. Um, having said that, with naltrexone, because it is an opioid blocker, if, for example, you have a foot surgery, a dental surgery, where the surgeon maybe gives you six or eight Vicodin or Percocet or something, you can stop the naltrexone for a couple of days before you need to take it. And once you've completed a small amount of opioid treatment for surgery, then you can go back on. The other proviso is, as a full disclaimer, if you're on naltrexone every day and you break your leg in an accident, you're gonna need morphine or some equivalent in an ER. As long as the ER doctor knows that you're on naltrexone, he or she can give you a high enough dose of morphine to overcome the naltrexone. But I really feel it's incumbent that people know that um, these situations might be unusual, but not knowing it if you are taking naltrexone every day and then you take a Vicodin for dental surgery, you're going to experience a little bit of withdrawal and the Vicodin's not going to work. So I sort of feel in full disclosure, people need to know that before they start taking it. For expert support on medication-assisted treatment for alcohol use disorder, visit RiaHealth.com. Thank you.